Good morning. It is good for us to be gathered together this morning for worship. I'm glad that you are here as we start our new worship time here at 9 a.m. Following worship, I invite you out just outside of here for some refreshments, a chance for fellowship, a chance to say hello to those who maybe you haven't seen for a while or maybe you just don't recognize yet as they possibly went to the other worship service. And I encourage you not to say, hi, I'm so-and-so, are you new here? You might just get somebody who's been here longer than you. But I encourage you to say, hi, I'm so-and-so. What is your, I don't think I've met you before. What's your name? Just a chance to meet those who maybe you haven't had a chance to meet yet. Also, I'll say I brought the treats, and they're two of my favorite desserts that I brought. So I hope that you enjoy them as well. And so it'll just be a chance to talk and to greet each other. Um, a few notes. Please note that there's information about here about winter weather closings, which we went through this past week for Ash Wednesday. I hope that through our various ways of getting the news out there that you heard that information. Next Sunday will be a Discover Church of Our Savior. For those who are not members yet of our congregation, but would like to learn more about our congregation and possibility of joining the congregation come for some conversation together. It's a chance just to learn about our congregation. There's no, you coming does not mean that you have to join the congregation. The chance for you to learn some more and for us to learn more about you. For those who do decide to join, we will welcome you into the congregation on March 12th during service. And then I do want to also bring, it looks like they're getting pretty full out there, but there are two bo boxes out there of collecting um, hygiene products for the homeless in our community. Um, you'll find a list of what all you can bring in on the back of your announcements. With that, I invite you to stand as you are able as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Jesus fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tested in every way that we are tested, yet remained without sin. God is our strength every morning. God is our hiding place in times of trouble. Let us join together in confessing our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, in this unfinished life, we confess our values do not always align with yours. We do not know how to value what you value. And amid the temptations, tests, and trials of our lives, we choose wrongly. Forgive us and lead us through the wilderness so that cross marked and spirit sealed, our lives will reflect you and your love for this world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, has come to us in Jesus, who by his holy cross has redeemed the world. Buried with Christ by baptism into death, your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Cross marked and spirit sealed, you are raised to new life. Almighty God, strengthen you in faith to live each day renewed in God's call for your life. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lead us by your Spirit, O God, to value what you value and to live our lives reflecting those values. Shepherd our commitments that they may reflect your purposes in and through our lives. Show us when our values are misguided and move us to correct our ways. In the name of Jesus. You may be seated. The first reading comes from Genesis chapter 2. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge, of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say, you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the servant, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed big leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord.
The second reading comes from Romans, the fifth chapter. Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned where there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who has to come. But the free gift is not like trespass. For if the many die through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God. And the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin. For the judgment followed one trespass, brought condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If, because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it, it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor, and he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Will you please pray with me? O oh God, may the words spoken and the words heard be your words. For only when you speak do we have life. Amen. So this past Wednesday, we entered the season of Lent. It did not start the way we thought that it would, or maybe how we wanted it to, as the weather kept us at a distance. And yet, with our recent history, we've learned how to pivot and go online when we have to. But no matter how we gathered, 
we have still entered this 40-day journey, which if you're one of those people who check your calendars, it's 40 days because Sundays don't count. They're little Easter's. So they don't, they're not part of the 40-day countdown. But this journey that we have entered on is one of reflection, repentance, and preparation for the mystery of that empty tomb. As we take time now, in this season of Lent, we take time to see how God is working in our everyday lives. In this time between no longer and not yet, which that can be taken in so many ways in our own lives. And so each week we will think about how we are called to different practices. Today we think about how we are called to values. So as we go forward thinking about what we value, I want to acknowledge that there are times where what we value are tangible things. People and relationships, good food, time with loved ones, sunshine, certain buildings and places. However, as we look at today's gospel reading, we should look more at our core values, which are a way of being or believing that we hold most important, what drives us forward. I mean, if we're not sure what we're talking about with these core values, I could give you a nice long list of possibilities that aren't even all of them. Accountability, achievement, adaptability, competence, confidence, curiosity, dignity, grace, gratitude, growth, harmony, honesty, inclusion, joy, kindness, optimism, perseverance, power, pride, reliability, resourcefulness, serenity, tradition, travel, trust, truth, understanding, usefulness, vulnerability, wealth, well-being, wisdom. Those are just a few. So I want to start with asking you a question. And, and I want responses back. This is not about yourself, but what does society want us to value? What are the values of the world? Truth, money, happy, helping people. No, we're saying just words. We're just, Patrick, we're just offering words. All right. Five, did you say one? Big houses. Body image. Success. Having more. Is that friendship? Friendship. Well. What about power? Control? Be it over our own lives or others? These are, I want us to hold on to these. Hold on to these values that the world and society tell us are important. I've been taking a class for the last 18 months. I officially end the course next Saturday. I can have Thursday nights free now. I was gathering one to two Thursday nights for three hours at a time with this cohort. Wonderful learning. But from seven to 10 at night, it's tiring. 
but it's been a class on leadership where we've been connecting vulnerability and emotional intelligence to how to go from debate to dialogue, something called the Johari window and the U, group development, family systems, adaptive change, and so much more. But we also spent time in one of our classes looking at our own core values. So before one class, we started, ask, were asked to make a list of our values. To start first with our top 10, then to whittle it down to our top five, and eventually ending with our top two core values. To come down to our top two, that took some time it took discernment. Thinking about if any of those top ten actually work together in a different word, could pull them together and become one word. You had to understand yourself, your identity, who you are, and really how you make decisions. For if they are a way of being or believing that we hold most important to ourselves, we make choices based on these values. For me, I came to understand that my two are belonging and truth. So, around the same time, I thought it would be a great thing to ask our congregation, what are the values of our congregation? First, I asked our youth, and then on a different day, I asked the adults who happened to be in forum that day, what do you think are the values of Church of Our Savior? I let each of them come up with six. Couldn't quite bring it down to two. The youth said, patience and compassion, that's one together, service, trust, welcoming, thankful, together. The adults said faith, caring and compassion, community, acceptance, welcoming, service. We take these two lists and we see some overlap in compassion, service, togetherness, community, and welcoming. I invite you to just think about those words, and you would say those are the values of Church of our Savior. And so as we think about what we value and what our core values are, be them our own or for our congregation, we also have to think about whether they are life-giving values or if they are life-draining. For what we value might not be what we hoped for or want them to be. We might not value in practice what we value in idea. And it can be hard to know what we really and truly value unless we dive into them and understand the roots of what we value. And it can be even harder to see if our values line up with Jesus' values. Because it's kind of hard at times to decipher what do Jesus values, what the world values. And then there's today's gospel reading. This story of Jesus' temptation. It's a story really of values and conflicting values where we get an opportunity to understand, to see what Jesus values. There's so often out there the idea that here in these temptations, Jesus is a hero. Stoic, pious, 
He resists the Lord to comfort and security and glory, and in so doing, he shows his fortitude and self-reliance. However, as we look closer and deeper into the story and into these temptations, we will see that it is not the values of this reading. It's really a story of values of the opposite. A value of open-handed, open-hearted, humble, and humbling trust. We can start with the first temptation, where we hear the tempter saying, you are fasting for 40 days and nights, you must be famished. Make yourself comfortable. Turn these stones into bread for yourself. The tempter is calling at Jesus to the worldly value of comfort and of attaining that comfort at all costs and selfishness to take stones and change them from what they are and what they're meant to be to be what you need them to be. To which Jesus says, no. We do not live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus here is saying to the tempter, he does not put his trust in his own power. Jesus setting his value as selflessness over selfishness. In the second temptation, we see the tempter saying, prove that you are God's beloved. God will command the angels concerning you. They will not let your foot hit a stone. We hear this tempter saying that if you are, or because you are the beloved of God, which we did just hear in the Gospel of Matthew just before Jesus out in 40 days, was the announcement at Jesus' baptism, you are my son, my beloved. You are the beloved of God. Then God will keep you safe. We hear a value of security. We hear a question of identity. If you are the beloved of God, why would God let you get hurt? And when Jesus responds, do not put the Lord your God to the test, We hear about vulnerability, and true vulnerability at that. That to be human is to be vulnerable. We hear that God's precious children still bleed, still ache, still die. And we hear in Jesus' response that we are loved in our vulnerability not out of it, to security. We hear Jesus value vulnerability over security and safety and comfort. Then the third temptation, the tempter saying, I will give you everything that you see if you will just worship me. We hear the tempter calling Jesus to power and to control. In his response, worship the Lord your God and serve God only. Jesus is denying those worldly values of power and control. Instead, valuing humility and surrender. Behind these three temptations, We hear a deeper value come forth, trust in God. We get a picture of humanity not as that of valuing independence over God, not as heroic self-reliance, not of power, control, security, all those worldly ones that we named not self-reliance. We get a picture of humanity as humble creatures made for reliance on God. 
relying on God for sustenance, loving kindness, guidance, to be in humble communion and trust in God. In this reading, we see that what Jesus values, what God values, is much different, if not the complete opposite of what society says that we should value. So it can be hard to tell what are the values of God and what are the values of the world. And into that we also hear from this text. But we are led by the Spirit as we daily wrestle with what it means for our own lives to value what Jesus values. For God leads us to value what God values. Lead me by your spirit, O oh God, to value what you value. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us join together in professing our faith found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the, On the third, third day, day he rose again, he ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. 
You alone are God. Sustain your church in times of wilderness. Give vision and wisdom to bishops, their staff, and all entrusted with the ministry of administration. Counsel all who faithfully lead your people into the future. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You create verdant gardens and expansive deserts. Tend to the needs of every living creature. Bless those who work in fields and orchards, that the world is nourished by the fruits of their labor. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You know our temptations. Sustain those who govern and legislate. Instill in them a sense of your justice and righteousness, that equity and peace would pervade all the regions and nations of the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are a hiding place for all in distress. Draw near to exiles and accompany all refugees and immigrants, especially children who travel alone. In times of trouble, trauma, or illness, surround your people with your steadfast love. We especially pray for healing and comfort for those on the prayer list. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You offer abundance to all. Bless the ministries of hospitality in this place. Care for those who tend to the needs of others, especially worship greeters, coffee hour hosts, and nursery attendants. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You alone are God. We praise you for the faithful departed in every age. Unite our prayers with theirs until our wilderness journey is complete and we rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. This time we invite you to be seated. Today we recognize Bold Women's Day. Here at Church of Mercy. Please answer the re litany with me. O creative God, you made us in your image. You call us into discipleship in Jesus Christ. You empower us through the Holy Spirit. Let your loving kindness be upon us as you accept our prayers. O God of our ancestors, we remember the bold witness of our foremothers who paved the way for all women, lay and ordained. We give you thanks, O God. O Holy One who breathes life into us all, we raise before you the bold women among us today. We give you thanks, O God. For those who pray, for those who parent, for those who study, for those who advocate. We give you thanks, O God. For those who laugh, for those who share, for those who extend hospitality, for those who smile. We give you thanks, O God. O gracious one, forgive us when we are too timid to live up to the boldness you have placed within us. O oh, gracious one, enable us to recognize, honor, and support the boldness you have placed within others. We pray to you, O oh God. O oh God of infinite possibility, grant to us all the opportunity to act boldly on our faith in Jesus Christ. Hear our prayer. O oh God of abundant life, grant to us all emotional, physical, and spiritual wholeness 
so that we may best serve others in your name. Hear our prayer. O God of strength, give us courage, hope, and open hearts that we might experience expanding possibilities and grow through change. Hear our prayer. Nurturing God, you have inspired and empowered women throughout all ages. Give us the courage and wisdom to act boldly on your faith in you, O creating, redeeming, and sustaining one. Amen. Mary Arthur, would you please come forward? Well, she is in here. This congregation is full of old women, and uh, one that has been not named yet is Mrs. Jill Bjorns, and it is my honor this morning to do that. And we have a plaque here. It's an honor of Old Women's Day, <clears throat> and it says, "Women of the ELCA, give thanks to God." For Jill B. Orsted, for her many years of coordinating our bereavement and shut-in ministries and service to the congregation as women of the ELCA president, along with youth work back in the day, planning adult forums, working in the office for I don't know how long it was, Mary did the same thing, all these things. I think my first conversation of any depth with Jill was, how can she become involved in youth ministry? And I don't even remember when that was. That was probably in the 90s. So we are honored to honor you. It is my privilege, and God bless you. It was a morning of surprises all around. <laughs> the peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another.
God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and everlasting life. Amen. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist us in this ministry in which we are sent forth. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those to whom we bring this sacrament, that through the body and blood of your Son, we all may know the comfort of your abiding presence. Amen. Receive this blessing. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey.
peace. Serve in love. Thanks be to God.